Welcome to the Juan Engineers Automotive Corner. Today we're going to talk about pickup trucks, specifically their drive axle and why these American giants have soldiered on with solid axles for so long and continue to do so. There is a very practical reason for this and we're going to go over it and I'll give you a hint. It has something to do with the Michelin Man. Let's start off by grounding ourselves in what is a solid axle. So a solid axle is shown in the photograph here outlined in the cyan and it is one piece of structural steel that houses the rear gears and the axle shafts that go out and actually drive the rear wheels. So this is one solid piece of steel as I said so whatever happens on the left tire or driver side tire is directly affecting the passenger side tire and vice versa. Now we have to look at the alternative to a solid axle. What does that look like? Of course, that is referred to as an independent suspension. So this is a photograph of an independent rear suspension. In the circle in the middle, you would have your gearing and then attached to that at pivot points, the filled in circles, would be a arms or arms and then within those arms you would have a drive axle go to each wheel so this configuration has the gearing and that center section bolted directly to the frame and those arms are allowed to pivot and move independent from passenger side to drive side so this allows a drive side wheel tire combination to hit a pothole and articulate while not directly affecting the passenger side. The main benefits of an independent rear suspension setup are improved handling and ride quality. Now, like most things in life, there are many different reasons the solid axle is still used in pickup trucks, including simplicity, um, cost advantages over the independent suspension. However, the main reason has to do with payload, and it's not necessarily around the robustness of the solid axle versus independent suspension. It has more to do with the geometry and how the wheel and tire combination articulates. To understand this relation to payload, we need to start flexing the suspension. So in this scenario, we put 50% payload in the back of a truck directly over that rear axle. And we can see what happens in our solid axle truck is the frame moves closer to the solid axle. So the springs compress, whether they're leaf springs or coil springs in this example. What's happening is the body and frame of the truck are moving, compressing those springs and moving down towards the rear axle. In our independent suspension, it's a little bit different. So the center section of that rear end is connected to the frame. So that is moving down with the frame and the body. The center section all come down together when those springs compress. And what that does is articulates those suspension arms that are connected to the wheels. And we start getting a negative camber on the tires. So now if we go even further to 100% payload, we can see in our solid axle vehicle, the frame has moved even closer to, the, to that rear axle. However, our tire alignment is unaffected. In our independent suspension, that center section has come down further and caused those suspension arms to articulate even more and create significant negative camber on the wheels and tires. If we quickly flip back and forth between load scenarios, we can see the suspension articulate. And not only does it do this while adding and removing payload, but as you drive down the road and pass over bumps or any rough terrain, the suspension does the same thing. As it compresses on our independent suspension, it pulls in the top of the wheel tire combination. As it relaxes, it pulls in the bottom. So the only time your wheel and tire is in perfect camber alignment is when the vehicle is sitting under its own weight in the condition that it was aligned. 
So all things equal, even if you're not towing and hauling, a independent suspension will have a lower tire life. Now, in most situations for passions or vehicles, that difference is minimal and it's worth the trade-off for improved ride and handling. Now, when we talk about vehicles that are designed to tow and haul, the tire life in those situations would be completely unacceptable. And that is why independent suspension has not come to those vehicles. So much so that in our three quarter and one ton trucks, we often see solid axles in the rear on the drive tires and the front tires in the four wheel drive trucks because the payload capacity of those trucks is so high that the front of those trucks squats just like the rear in our scenario and it would throw our tire alignment off enough to make steering and tire life detrimental at those high payloads. There is a way to design a conventional independent suspension to provide constant wheel tire camber, and that is to use parallel equal length suspension arms shown on this graphic. Unfortunately, packaging becomes a very difficult problem, especially in frame vehicles. The frame gets in the way of that top equal length arm. So this really has not been used outside of off-road equipment and race cars. The packaging just becomes a little bit too difficult for pickup trucks and on-road vehicles. Now, if you watch the automotive news like I do, you've probably been thinking this entire time, wait a minute, all of the new generations of pickup trucks that are coming out right now are employing independent rear suspension. How are they doing that? And there's different reason for most of them. So on this page, we have a summary of some of those new generation pickups. In the lower right corner, we have the Hyundai Santa Cruz and the Ford Maverick, and those are in the compact segment. So you may say those are not true pickup trucks. Well, we can debate that. The payload ratings on these vehicles are actually fairly impressive, especially on the Maverick. How do they get away with the independent suspension? Well, these are front drive vehicles. So the rear tires are just kind of along for the ride. And if they go into a negative camber situation, it's not as large of an impact as if they were drive tires. Of course, there are all-wheel drive options for these. However, those are still significantly front biased. Unless the front tires experience slipping, very little torque is set to the rear tires. The Santa Cruz also has a ratcheting mechanism in its shock to try to maintain a level ride even when loaded down. The trucks in the upper left of the graphic, of course, the, as the lightning bolt signifies, are electric vehicles coming to market, the Rivian, the Tesla Cybertruck, and the Ford Lightning. The Cybertruck and the Rivian use air suspension, and we'll show how that benefits this and enables the use of the independent suspension. And of course, Ford is doing something slightly different that we'll get into shortly. You might recognize this graphic from earlier when we talked about independent suspensions. And of course, this is the underside of the Rivian R1T truck and pointing out the air springs here. So they're using a pretty conventional independent rear suspension setup, but utilizing air springs in the place of coil springs. How does incorporating an air suspension prevent that camber, negative camber situation? And that's really the ability to vary the pressure in those air springs. So we can see in our scenario here, the coil springs have been replaced with airbags. And there's always an onboard compressor in these vehicles so that you're, you're able to deflate or inflate these air springs so that you can maintain a level truck and get the independent suspension in the stock or unloaded ride height to make sure that you're traveling down the road where the tire and wheel combination is aligned. 
Now we'll get to Ford. Of course, Ford always likes to do something a little bit different. And they have completely thrown out the conventional playbook on rear suspensions and have gone with a swing arm style. You can see in the graphic in the upper right, the highlighted yellow piece is a large swing arm that pivots off of the frame. This allows the wheel to travel up and down while maintaining camber. It's an interesting setup. Normally you see this on the rear of a motorcycle or dirt bike. Uh, swing arm is very popular, but this also accomplishes the task. This suspension is the most intriguing to me. They've engineered out the camber issue on a independent suspension and have used geometry in their advantage. The big question mark in my mind is what long-term reliability will look like just because this has not been seen in the automotive industry. And the single large pivot point at the front of that swing arm is going to take a lot of load and it appears to be cantilevered out from the frame a decent distance. I'm sure they've designed it to take plenty of abuse, but time will tell. I hope you've enjoyed the first installment of the Lawn Engineers Automotive Corner. More to come. Thanks for watching. Adios.